Today, we are a society of watchers. We watch TV. We watch our phone. We watch the news. We watch our weight. We get on Zoom to watch what other people are doing, but few of us are looking to see. That's right, few of us are looking to see. I think about an eight-year-old boy. We look at him, and eight months ago, he was doing well academically, solid in his studies, and then now he's remorse, and he's solemn, and he's quiet. But no one's seen that his parents divorced, and that he is taking the weight of it all, and that his childhood is now gone. No one is seeing the hearts of mothers and fathers who are trying to take care of children in this stay-home demand, where they're not teachers, and they are overwhelmed with the idea of how can they teach their children to go in the right direction because they're not being seen and their difficulty. And we're not, we're not seeing the healthcare people, the nurses and the doctors and the emergency people and the suffering and hardships that they go through on a battlefield trying to save lives against an invisible enemy. And then they come home and they have to distance themselves and hang in a different room and wash themselves in order to protect their own family from this deadly virus. No one is seeing. We're all watching, watching everything. We're watching, but we're not looking to see. There's a testimony in the book of Luke about two followers who left Jerusalem three days after Jesus was crucified. And they were walking along the road, heading to Emmaus. Their hearts were heavy and solemn while they were in a serious discussion about what had occurred in the last past three days. I imagine they were talking about all the events that took place that week. You know, Jesus entered into the city of Jerusalem as the King of David. Israel was hoping and praying for a Redeemer. They were thinking and believing that this Jesus was the one who was going to redeem them from the bondage of a tyranny they were under from the Romans. They put a parade on him. Remember, they put palms out so that he would be rushed, and he came in on a donkey. And everybody was, they were confused. This was a king. And the city was in turmoil. They were, one, there was, was going to be an uprising. Who was going to stop this Roman Empire from the abuse that they were going through? And then four days later, four days later, they arrest Jesus. They stripped him. They mocked him. They beat him. And then they put him on a cross. The people said, kill him. The Romans were ready to kill. They were masters at killing people on a cross and punishing them. This was Israel's king. And everyone was afraid. Everyone didn't know where they were going to go. What was happening here? That day they stuck him on the cross. The sky turned black. Lightning, earthquakes graves opened up and he was dead and placed in a tomb these two disciples witnessed all this and now they're walking down a road to Emmaus running well basically running from the fear the unknowns their expectations weren't met they were hoping they were watching. They were watching all those things that were taking place. But they, they weren't seeing. David made this triumphal entry into Jerusalem. They were looking for that hope. But Jesus patiently guided the two disciples from hopelessness to celebration. And also to nourish them, these two disciples in their faith, to such an extent that we can see his real presence 
His real presence was demonstrated when he broke the bread. They were walking when it started out in disbelief. And it ended up in joy and excitement and love. And it was a phase in her life in which they understood both the scriptures and the Lord himself differently than what they had been doing before. They were watching all that Jesus was doing, but they weren't seeing the true love of the Son of God. We have that problem in our lives today. We hear stories about Jesus. We hear and see the pictures. We go to church sometimes. We, we watch Jesus. We watch what's going on. But are we really seeing, are we looking to see salvation? That's a question. Are you looking at Jesus or are you just watching everything as it takes place? Finally, Jesus opened their minds to understand this, to teach and demonstrate it. And he, he clarified, he clarified the prophecies that he fulfilled and yet yet their eyes were blind because before all this the word of God was a, mer a mystery and no one knew did you know that 30% of the Bible is prophecies yet we're not looking we're not looking to see that which will be fulfilled why why are we not looking at scriptures? Jesus told these two disciples, examine the scriptures. See that I am who I am and that I fulfill these scriptures. How do I know? You need to read the scriptures. You need to be in the scriptures. They are living. This word of God is the same today as it was the day those two disciples were walking on the road to Emmaus. If you have a Bible, I would like you to open to Luke chapter 24, verse 13. This is a video, so you can hit the pause button and get a Bible and follow along with me, because I really want to unpack this with you. Verse 13. Two of them that same day were making their way to a village named Emmaus, seven mile distance from Jerusalem, discussing as they went all that had happened in the course of their lively exchange, Jesus approached and began to walk along with them. However, they were restrained from recognizing him. Here are two disciples who had witnessed the miracles of Jesus and yet could not see him nor identify him. Why is that? Why could they not see who the Savior was? He said to them, What are you discussing as you go your way? They halted in distress. They were done and over with this. This whole past week was horrible. And one of them, Cleopas by name, which means glory to the Father, asked him, Are you the only resident of Jerusalem? who does not know the things that went on these past few days, he had a tone of arrogance speaking to Jesus that way. He said to them, what things? And they said, all those that had to do with Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet powerful in word and indeed in the eyes of God and all the people, how our chief priests and leaders delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified. We were hoping that he was the one who would set Israel free. Hoping. Besides all this, today, the third day since these things happened, some of the women of our group had just brought us some astonishing news. Good news. They were at the tomb before dawn and failed to find his body, but returned with a tale 
that they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our number went to the tomb and found it to be just as the woman said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, what little sense you have. Basically, Jesus says, you have no faith. No, what sense, how slow are you to believe all that the prophets had announced? Many people today hear about Jesus, but have very little faith in him and, and are slow to understand who he is. Did not the Messiah have to go undergo all this so as to enter his glory? He's questioning him. Didn't he have to do this? Interpreting every passage of the scripture which referred to him. By now, they were nearing the village to which they were going. And he acted as if he were going to go a little further. But they pressed him, stay with us. It's nearing evening. And the day is practically over. So he went in to stay with them. When he had seated himself with them to eat, he took bread, pronounced a blessing, then broke the bread, began to distribute it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, whereupon he vanished from their sight. Then they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning inside us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They got up immediately and returned to Jerusalem where they found the eleven and the rest of the company assembled. And they were greeted with, The Lord has been raised! It is true! He had appeared to Simon! And then they recounted what had happened on the road and how they had come to know him in the breaking of the bread. Jesus said that he's the bread of life, but he had to be broken in order to give us life. During the journey to Emmaus, Jesus patiently guided the two disciples from hopelessness to celebration, and also to nourish the two disciples' faith to such an extent that they can see the real presence of the breaking of the bread. Jesus is alive. The walk started out in disbelief and sadness, thinking that everything was hopeless, but Jesus came alongside them. It ended in joy and excitement and true devotion. The same can happen to each one of us when we invite him into our heart. Jesus is the bread of life. Finally, as Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures, they were no longer doubtless and entered into a phase of their life in which they understood the scriptures and the Lord himself differently. Before the resurrection, much of the word of God was a mystery. What we see is a glorious transfiguration of two men who were sad when they did not fully understand, did not fully understand what they were experiencing, but who then became powerful witnesses for Jesus after he showed himself to them. They were not ready, but he made them ready. Are you ready? They were sad, but Jesus filled them with joy. Let the word of God dwell richly in your heart, every one of you, so that you will be well equipped for every good work, able, able to give an answer to anyone for the hope that there lies within you. We should not be sad. We should not. 
we should not we should lift our heads up high and know that our redemption draws near final point when god ordains things to happen contrary to our expectations like cleopas not expecting jesus to die like this virus we are battling those are times when we are tempted to doubt his word we lose faith and as a result we lose sight of him not being able to see jesus doesn't mean that jesus isn't there walking alongside of us we may not we may not recognize him those are not the times to neglect god's word rather those are the times to spend hours looking to see that is where you will begin to recover your sight. Where can we see hope? We look around today and everything seems to be empty. Empty stores, empty shelves, empty hearts, empty dreams. But something else is empty and it's the tomb. Yes, right, the tomb is empty. The world is not our home. It is not the final reality show. Jesus is alive and well, and he is still teaching us today by his spirit and his word, even from his seat in heaven. I pray that this video was a blessing to you, that it edifies you, enriches you to glorify God even more. God has not abandoned us he will never abandon his creation. Jesus is coming again. Just like the road to Emmaus, he came alongside of them and comfort them. As he will with you also. When you hear the call, and the call is calling, open your eyes or your heart and invite him in. Grace and peace be to you. Father God, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, I pray that the ears that hear this message would see that they would turn from different ways in their life and return back to their passion and love for Christ. Father, I pray for the Christians that are afraid right now and wondering whether or not you are returning. You are indeed. And I pray there be a rich blessing and answered prayer to this. And we give you thanks and praise for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And all the saints said, Amen. God bless.